And new developments there on the escaped killer who has been on the run in Chester County for 11 days now. Just in the last hour, officials giving a press conference with more details on the search um, and Danilo Cavalcante's movements. Want to listen to some of what they had to say. I do believe that he's still in Pennsylvania. He is absolutely looking for support. He needs that support. He doesn't have it. The planning that was going into tomorrow's efforts, we were bringing even more resources in. He is very determined. We are even more determined. Um, he will be held to justice. NBC's Marissa Parra is in Chester County, Pennsylvania uh, for us. Give us an update, Marissa, if you will, on, on some of what we just heard and where we are now. Yeah, we learned a lot. And I think the first thing to start off with is police are asking for the public's help in this. They have been. But one of the things that they're really stressing to people, not just keep an eye out, but make sure not just your homes are locked, but also your vehicles. Make sure that you're not doing something like leaving them, not just unlocked, but leaving the keys inside of a car. Because Gavalcante right now on the run, clearly looking for any opportunity he can to aid himself. So we're going to go through everything that we learned that really illustrates what he's been doing so far and what they believe he's capable of. So uh, we understand there's a local dairy farm not too far away from where we are right now. This is near the Longwood Gardens. Behind me is the command post that has been the nerve center for the last 11 days, if you will, here in Chester County. And so it was somewhere between the hours of 7 and 10 p.m. yesterday. This local dairy farm, this family inside was asleep. Little did they know when they left their keys inside of that van, at some point, Cavalcante stole that vehicle. And so police then later discovered, because they got calls about this, 9.52 p.m. And as well at 10.07 p.m., he attempted to ring the doorbell cameras, uh, ring the doorbells of old friends, old associates that he used to know from the past, asking for help. He is seen on camera doing so. And that's actually where you see some of those new images of him with a whole new look. You see that green sweatshirt, a new hat, the same prison pants, but a new look. He's got a freshly shaven face, even sporting a new smile here as he was asking for help from some old friends of his. And so then... Police had a confirmed sighting. They they identified a vehicle associated with him somewhere around 520 in the morning. Things get a little hazy. Police are not filling in the dots for us in terms of exactly what has happened, where we know that they had a confirmed sighting at a church near Phoenixville. And again, for reference, for those who don't know this area, that's about 40 minutes about northeast of where we are right now, where all of this. Remember, Longwood Gardens was where that search was, that four mile perimeter here just yesterday. Now, 40 minutes northeast of here. That's where they had a confirmed sighting of him at a church. And that was Phoenixville. So then this morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, they found that van, that van that they said everyone should be on the lookout for, abandoned behind a barn. They said they believe one of the reasons why that vehicle was abandoned was due to low fuel. Now, when we talk about the urgency, asking people to be on the lookout, to keep their, their keys out of their vehicle, keep those vehicles locked and keep their homes locked, because clearly, as we're seeing, he already stole a van. They think they're not sure what he's doing right now, but they think it's very possible that he might have stolen another. They didn't report any signs or have any reports of a stolen vehicle, but they say he is desperate. He is looking for help. And anyone who is caught having done so already or that will do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Yasmin.